Welcome to the RVA Returners Podcast, your weekly source for all things Final Fantasy TCG. Oh, getting there all the tracks here. Man, we're... This is what, 26 we're doing today? Yeah, 26. Man, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Speaking of which, we should probably get started on the next episode of the RVA Returners Podcast. Guys, we are back. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. I am your host, Chris Adams. With me, as always, is Adam Lane. And uh, we got a fun one today. Um, lot of, uh, n- nothing too terribly crazy to talk about. You know, we've got some tournament results to cover. But now we're finally, well, we've got some, and we've, but we've also got some somber news to cover too. So, you know, it, it's not all, you know, peaches and cream around these parts. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll dive more into that like we always do. Because you know how we like to dive in, Adam Lane. What do you, what do you, where do you think we're going? I don't know, man. It's like a mystery every time. Oh, well, mystery solved. It's the news. So first up, we've got some uh, some fresh spoilers since last week. Uh, only three this time, right? Four. Four, Four okay. Four total. We're going to be missing out on two that are going to be shown tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. We are recording on Saturday. Um, I know there's two tournaments that we'll get into that... Today is their day one. By the time this airs, they will be over, but we'll cover those in any spoilers next week. And obviously, we'll post them on our Facebook page as they come up. But uh, the new, the newest ones up to this point, what do we got, Adam? Where are we starting? So the first one's Prish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't actually don't remember who showed this, but it was shown. Uh, so it's a 9 CP forward 9K. Mm-hmm. Uh, cost required to play Prish is reduced by one for each card named Prish in your break zone. Uh, when Prish enters the field, choose one forward, opponent controls, deal a damage equal to Prish's power. Card's not bad. Uh, obviously, it is tied to running this Prish package, which, tell you what, fantastic in title. Yeah, honestly, like, I think maybe you could get away with not running a whole lot of Prish, and you could run, like, some kind of magic pot. Well, it, well isn't there that one that when you, you can put another Prish into play. Isn't that six or less, though? Oh, it's six or less? Mm, I think that, that's, so. Okay. There is... Well, so there's two Prishes that put Prish into play. I think the two drop mm-hmm. says six or less. I could be wrong. Okay. I don't know for sure. I'd have to look at it. And then the other one I don't think has a limit, but I think that's like a five or a six CP. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, Magic Pot. But you can Magic Pot all of them into play. Mm-hmm. So maybe, like, you play this and one of the five costs or something, or maybe the two costs if you really want to get, like, the most value, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then you can play some other stuff that can abuse Magic Pot. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, if you Magic Pot the 2 CP, then you're really paying, because Magic Pot plus 1, then 1 to break, and then you're paying 2 for Prish. So that's 4 to play a 9K that deals 9K on the Yeah, that, that's going to kill something when it comes in. Yeah. Hey, could be neat. Could be fun. Um, Obviously, again, the title implications are there. The uh, implication the title, she's going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They just need summons. 11 has no summons. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, it's all just Shantoto and Prish. And Cam and Elmer Oh, yeah, Nosh. I forgot they're in there too, aren't they? Yeah, so they've got good forwards. Star they've got Sibyl. great forwards. <laughs> Star Sybil. Yeah, so they've uh, got good yeah. for Yeah, no summons. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's just it's like 14. Yeah, 14 doesn't have any summons yeah, either. Yeah, but they are all gas. Yeah. Uh, so the second one was a lot of well, the one that like a lot of people jumped Oof. up and down about. Yeah, this card's, I think this card's I great. I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's Yuri. He's a 4CP light forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has all elements except dark. Mm-hmm. And that's when he's on the field, mind you. Yeah, it's a field ability. And then um, his other ability is dull a total of three active backups of the same element or two active backups and Yuri. Uh, but so the... Actually, now that I'm reading this, do the two active backups and Yuri need to share the element? Because that makes, it makes me seem like no, it doesn't. Um, I thought I read it like that before, and I just mm-hmm. now I'm just reading it again. So it sounds like the second part of the ability, you can just dull two, any two yeah, backups, any two backups and, and, Yuri. and Yuri. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty good. Makes it better for like multicolor stuff. Absolutely. I guess. Um, select one of the four following. Draw a card. Mm-hmm. Choose a forward deal at 4K. Mm-hmm. Choose a forward dull and freeze it. Which is huge. Choose a forward that loses all abilities until end of turn. And he's an 8K. Man. So. I'm a. Like, th- this card has control staple written all over it. And, like, it's good. It's a good splash card. I know immediately people were thinking like, "Oh, we could throw this in mono wind." Oh, this is great in earth wind. Oh, this is great in mono ice because of the redundant effects. But I'll tell you right now, man, any kind of control shell you're playing this thing in because it creates like it creates these really neat things to do on your opponent's turn. Yeah, yeah, doing them like at the end, like Raphael and 
abilities like that, which is what this is similar to. Yep. Like, doing them at the end of your turn and then doing it again on your turn to, like, push through mm-hmm. is really good. Or just doing it at the end of your opponent's turn every time. Yeah. Also good. Um, yeah, the Dolan Freeze is what, you know, I know that got, uh, that's the one that a lot of people zeroed in on because, you know, that that's something that's been pretty outside of, like, Ultimisha, the old mm-hmm. one. That's been a, a, a mechanic pretty exclusive to Ice, and I feel like this guy has something that relates to all the elements. Kind of, yeah. I mean, the 4K is kind of fiery. Yep. Draw cards kind of water, I guess. Yep. Uh, but so, losing your abilities, that's kind of water, too. Yeah. I guess. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, wind, obviously, is going to can abuse them the most, because you can right, activate like, a bunch like of stuff. Like, activating the ability itself is what feels like wind, you know what I mean? Like, the cost. Um, you know, like... You could do a lot of things with this card. That my issue is like, is is he going to replace Cam? And I think not. Like, right? Like these controlly decks that you're saying, like Cam is there. Well, so is Nidhogg. Cool. Yeah. Sure. And some. Yeah. Now I do think people are forcing him into too many decks, but there are decks where he just really works. Like when you Don't. can pay for him and you have the cards to pay for him, he's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but Cam like just makes a lot of things work that don't normally work. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like Yuri is doing that. But Yuri, I think you can just shove Yuri in like a mono deck, and he'll be better than Cam mm-hmm. in that regard. Sure. Um, so I, I could see him, and you know, in Mono Earth he's searchable. Yep. Um, and it gives Mono Earth access to like Dolan Freeze and a few other. I, I like him in Mono Earth. I just, again, I don't know how good he's going to be, but mm-hmm. he, on paper he's really strong. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, the next spoiler actually plays pretty well with Yuri. Yeah. So Actually, the next two, the next two, yeah, yeah, they both do. It seems like that's going to be, like, a thing. Maybe that a lot... Like, maybe every element has a card that works with him. Yeah. I, I don't know. Which makes sense. Uh, yeah, I know Curtis said... Think, that's his theory. That's Curtis's theory. So mm-hmm. that, that, that's going to be the case. And, I mean, it's holding true so far. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the next one is uh, Shalinka. I guess that's how you say sure, it. Sure, she's Russian. Um, so, if you control a Crystal Chronicles character... Mm-hmm. Or, no, my bad. If a... Crystal Chronicles character you control deals damage to a forward. The damage yeah. increases by a thousand instead. Mm-hmm. So that includes combat damage. Yep. Uh, any damage that they would like deal from their card, uh, Hecaton Share, yep. Ralbon, that's going to deal an extra K Titan. Yep. And like her next ability also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then when she enters the field, deal a thousand damage to all forwards. So really, basically, it's two K. Yep. Which is a Viking wipe these days. Uh, and then her third ability is when she forms a party with a card named Yuri, choose a forward. Or monster and break it. Uh, the, she's a three CP seven. Kid. Yeah, so she's in, on in curve. wind. In wind. Yep. So she's on curve. It makes sense. She's a Crystal Chronicles character. Like she, she has all the stuff that looks like that. This is the this is the the new deck that's being pushed out of this set. Mm-hmm. Um, and that stuff seems really strong. I mean, granted, yeah, she's a three CP seven K. So, you know, most removal is going to just slam right into her. Sure. But. No, I, I think if you build the deck, I, I want to see what the rest of this engine is going to bring. Because obviously we've got Leo, um, Epitaph is the searcher from Opus 6. Mm-hmm. And then we've got, you know, like Yuri having all the colors, Leo, you know, giving all of your things colors. I think like they are really pushing this five color Crystal Chronicles deck. Sure. I, I mean, when I first saw this, I was thinking just like Firewind. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. Which holds true to the next card also. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about. But, uh,. And my reason for that was, like, you say she's open to removal, which is true. Like, mm-hmm. she gets hit by basically everything. But if you're not ready for her and you haste her and, Le- and Yuri's on the board. Oh, or yeah, this is dead. Or this is on the board and then you play Yuri and haste Yuri. Something's dead. Something's going to die. And mm-hmm. if one th- if they can kill one thing and maybe you get one of Yuri's abilities off, I think that might be worth it. Yeah, it, it could just swing the game. Oh. So, And that goes right into the next card. Fucking get, get your coffee mugs out. We got number one dad coming next. Yeah, so Latov, he's a five CP uh, backup fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he enters the field, choo- uh, choose one card named Chalinka or Yuri in your break zone and put it onto the field. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think that's a that's a very synergistic and fair card. Yeah, I, th- I think he's fine. Uh, yeah. Some people are like... I've seen some posts that say it's like power power creep or whatever nah. that he's really good, and and here's the thing like people are comparing this to like devout and it's not not a fair comparison. Yeah. So first off, um, like some I've heard some people say that devout's just a better card than this because devout gets both targets. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason that this is better than devout when you're getting those two cards is because devout has to be out for a turn. Mm-hmm. Devout has to like tap and break so yep. like emperor things like that mm-hmm. shut it down. Uh, this stays on the field after yep. it's been played. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, he costs one if yep. you get Yuri back. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, and he's going to stay there and still produce fire. Yep. Uh, now, I mean, it's also in two different elements. Devout's still really good. I'm not saying, like, Devout's bad. Mm -hmm. But, like, if your focus is around this combo... Why are you playing Devout? Yeah. Like, exactly. even, even if you were just splashing ice to play Devout, just play that card. Yeah. It's it's just better um, in, in, in that scenario than Devout. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't really say there's any type of, like, power creep going on here. Well, because also, too, one of the things you could do is you could use Yuri, put that thing back into play, and you could essentially... Well, yeah, you can't. No, I'm sorry, never mind. You can't kill Emperor because you can't use Yuri. Yeah, Yuri is an action Emperor. ability. Yeah. Yep. But that's fine. But still, you know, it's. I feel like it's just more on theme than Devout is. Unless we get some crazy ice cards that for, for Yuri that kind of do something similar or, you know. Sure. But we don't know. I, I, re I really do like the way Opus 7 is shaping up. I think, you know, even like the most unassuming of cards have been really neat, like Cactar Conductor. Yeah, I mean, it's like, interesting stuff. Yeah, some really interesting things. I can't wait to see what what you know is going to show up tomorrow, which obviously we'll cover next week and on our Facebook page. Yeah, so there should be two more tomorrow, and then probably another re reveal or two during the week. So we'll probably have about four again. I would assume. Yep. And why do we keep saying there's spoilers tomorrow? Is because there are two tournaments. Actually, there's a few tournaments going on today. Well, so I know there's two just coming from the German alone. They've said that. Yep. Uh, the Spanish nationals, which we'll talk about in a second. I mm -hmm. don't know if they're showing anything or not. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, yeah, there's two big tournaments going on. Uh, so I guess if you want to talk about that. Oh yeah, so we got Spanish nationals and German nationals happening today, or the um, grand open, or grand, yeah, grand, which is uh, they are what they are. Yeah, I mean, that's what they are. Yeah. Right, and um, I didn't realize they were being streamed. Obviously, I wasn't home today either, so I wouldn't have been able to watch them anyway. But um, I know I know Joshua Freeman Birch went X one today. Mm -hmm. Um, he's on Wind Water. Yeah, I believe there's only one undefeated left, and it was a top fifteen cut. You know, mm -hmm. Their new system that they're doing, which yep. I like. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm, I like having the day one player, like the best day one player, being I agree. rewarded. Yeah, I like that too. Even if it like makes one person feel a little bit worse. Oops. Um, I, I think giving some someone something for doing good day one. Yeah, and if, is, if you go undefeated, like, if, or if you're just like you go X one, you're the top seed, man. You know, best you know, being pretty perfect all day is pretty hard. Yeah, you know what is. I mean. It's, like it's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, yeah, so only one undefeated left, and it's a turbo player. But it's an interesting turbo list. Oh yeah, a lot of the, the, the I know they've posted the top fifteen list. They did um, a lot of ice water. Um, yeah, there's like four or five ice waters in the mm -hmm. top fifteen, which mm -hmm. is about a third. Um, almost that many turbos. I say turbo. It's like oh, they're 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 kind of borderline turbo, right? Like they're low backup lists, but they're running big forwards yeah like orphans and kujas so and it seems stuff. like they're playing like they can hit the nut draw but they're playing more for like a longer game i'm not sure which is fine because that's you know the long I, game is something that old to, turbo lists sure. don't have but for me I, I get, if you're playing for that why not just play tempo sure like I, I would rather just play the backup game and then play the big guys for essentially cheaper rather than like build the two backups and then start dumping everything on the i don't board. know maybe Maybe they got maybe while they were testing they got to the point where it's like well you know what tempo feels good but it feels too slow whereas this feels like all right cool if I have the nuts I can just go but I'm not just dead if I stumble I maybe I, I don't know like yeah it, but I feel like you could, the DGS build can do that too yeah I and don't know I, I like it better yeah. I don't I don't know I mean you know again I'm not playing these builds like there are other people playing them and they probably have way more time on them than I do than oh I yeah do. but I I just based on what I've seen I would prefer the DGS build I think. Yeah, I, I, but again, they're doing really good with them. Yeah, my, oh if they broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah. So, and I mean, one guy's undefeated, so if I, you know, Man, in a in a field full of killers, no less. So, yep. I mean, that's that's good. That's real good. And then uh, I know we haven't seen much out of the Spanish national. I, yeah. I, I don't know if there was that was even streamed. I think or it what. was. I think I saw a link. I haven't seen any of it. I haven't seen any deck list pop up. I don't know who's in the top cut. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more news on it next week. We'll yeah, because we're gonna cover all that tomorrow. And then uh, as far as you know domestic tournaments i know the envy games their 1k is today our good buddy john well, schreiner yeah that's not envy games that's a uh, computer and gaming universe oh okay like but okay. it's at the same place that's at the oh okay okay uh, i thought both tournaments were run by the same but, yeah. uh, but i know this happened today our boy john schreiner's there he's rocking the rva returner shirt he showed me today good luck to him i i know the stream was on but yeah, I, really I know they're streaming. Anything. I haven't. I know. I, like I've been tuning in out, but every time I tune in, it's been on like a break or something. Yeah, I know. This gives me it gives me a lot to look at tomorrow during the day, so I can you know brush myself up. But no, it was cool. You know, congratulations to everybody who's doing well. You know, I I love that we're at a point now where it's like I can wake up on a Saturday, and it's almost like magic. I can go on to Twitch and be like, oh look, here's Gr Grand Prix Bumblefuck, whatever. Oh cool, that's all. Oh, it's modern. I'll watch now. I can like 
yeah. go online. It's like, oh, cool, here's a Final Fantasy tournament, like a legit one. I can pull that up and watch it and enjoy that. So that's, that's cool. We're, we're, we're in a good spot right now. I agree. Yeah, it's awesome. But we do, you know, I, I hate, I, I feel like I have to, you know, we have to get the bad news out now. So, you know, it, it's, we have all these great tournaments well, going on. We were supposed to be somewhere today. We were most certainly supposed to be somewhere today. Uh, and tomorrow, for that matter. The heavy, the heavy sigh, and one of our one of our stores, uh, one of the big stores here in Central Virginia, Pocket Gaming, that we've talked about, and is actually going to be kind of a, a key part of the main topic. They, uh, you know, for reasons unbeknownst to me, and you know, I don't like to pry, and I'm not going to ask. They had to close their doors. Yep. So one of the stores that is near and dear to us, like you know, the down in Pocosin that we've gone to for multiple tournaments, had to shut their doors, um, and it was pretty abrupt. I know we initially had to cancel the community day because of the hurricane. Yeah, which which I understood. Sure, so, that, that mean, was fine. Like yeah, we get that. That didn't really like sidelined us, right? Or like you know, knock us on our ass. Like it was like the hurricane was coming, which is funny because it completely died. Oh yeah, us. It, it just it just I, sidestepped I don't know. the shit out of us. So uh, I don't know if you've seen the most current. Actually, I'll just, I'm just gonna like sidetrack for a second i don't know if you saw the most current track of it but robin sent it to me and he 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 was a picture and he's like he's like this is what happens when you do wake up reversal super and it hits your opponent and it's just like (laughs) it's the hurricane and the original path was like this and here's the state of virginia and i say this it's like a straight line like through north carolina virginia it literally what goes around the state and up and missing like the it only hits like the very tip of virginia Uh, and misses like everything like central and Virginia eastern. Beach. Yeah, not even the beach or anything. No, not even the beach. It hits the uh, the western oh part of the state. Oh my god, that's so funny. So yeah, I mean, it's we got lucky in that regard, but it sucked, you know. And it, it was for people to be safe, and so I, I, that that was fine. Like we were just like, okay, we'll reschedule. We we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's uh, fine. It'll probably be after now. So we wouldn't even want anybody involved in driving. And that's still gonna happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna try to make it happen. Oh, it's right? definitely it's 100 percent happening. So whether it has to happen in Richmond or whatever. Yeah, and then it was like the next day. It was like day or two later. Yeah, because we were going, we were at our local. We we're just getting everything signed up, and I remember you pulled up your phone. And you said, "Hey, Chris, there's some. Uh, this sucks. There's some bad news." And you showed me your phone that uh, Vince had made the announcement that you know Pocket's closing its doors. Yeah, and I mean we don't know all the details. All we know is that it's uh, you know some. I mean you know bad situation happened. I guess maybe some disagreement between owners or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're losing like a really really good store in the area that supports like they have that Friday locals which they've found a spot now which yeah I'm glad. yeah thankfully they've been able to kind of pick up the pieces and you know maybe one of the store that's picked up their locals will you know they'll be able to kind of adopt the you know the tournaments we have down there like yeah. the vill- we we want to see the villain series continue yep sure it's one of the best tournament series in the state I think yeah I agree I agree um, it was awesome like the trophies are always cool mm-hmm. we went to we went to both. Yeah, um, I'm really, really looking forward to this third one. But you know what? Sometimes things are just out of your control, and we're glad that they're able. They've been able to pick up the pieces quickly, yeah. mind you. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, we don't know. Like, I mean, we were planning on streaming both those things. That's up in the air. Yeah. Um, I still want to stream both if I can. No, absolutely, absolutely. So it, it'll it, at this point, it's looking like it might be like after nationals or something. Yeah, which is fine. Which will give us more things like during the the inevitable lull after this competitive season. Yep. So, so don't lose hope. You know, we will still we'll still have those going for you afterwards. Just you know, just a little bit later than we hope. But you know, again, you know, thanks to Pocket for some good times, some good memories, and I really regret not buying that box copy of Mark Davis Master Fisherman <laughs> while I had the chance. Shit. And all, all $7 worth. Yep. But that's all right. So uh, you know, what, are the, what are the news we got going that's on it. here? That's, that's, uh, that is it. Those are all the headlines this week. Um, again, you know, you know, good luck to everybody competing in day two and all the big tournaments. Big shout out and thank you to everybody who's participating in the uh, Behemoth of a Benefit event with Envy Games tomorrow. Have a great time. You know, yeah, or today when you're listening. Yeah, it'll be today. You know, listen yeah. to this on the way there. So... Thank you for that. Thank you. It might for, not be out that early, but yeah. Well, maybe it depends on where you're driving <laughs> from, but still. But you know, news is over. We're going to kind of get into you know what we had wanted to do last week, but you know sometimes you know schedules you kind of have to go with the flow of things. We got really inspired by um, the Crystal Towers podcast a couple weeks ago, where he kind of he kind of took a trip down memory lane, kind of went over all of the. You know, all the episodes, all the guests he had on, just, you know, kind of you're really hitting it with the, the nostalgia. And, and we talk about this a lot here, and um, this coincides with the article that Austin put up. I believe it was yesterday that he put yep. this up. 
you know, like, I, I like, I lo- I'll love. i say I like, I love this community. I love, like, this the stories that you have, that you've de- that you've created, like, the, the, just those memories are, are the, the, you know, to me that's the best part of this game and this community. Like, like, I can't, like, Every time, like we start talking about tournaments, it's like, oh yeah, remember that time we did this with these guys, and it's it, like to me that's just as fun as, oh hey man, I kicked ass in top eight tonight, or yo Adam, you fucking slam this, you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's not just that; it's the going out to dinner afterwards. It's just the shooting the shit. It's the it's the the random hotel incidents. We're looking at you, <laughs> Stephen. It's a uh, it, it's like it's that stuff. Like that's the stuff that really. You know, sticks with me. So what we want to do, and that that's almost been like kind of like the the gas for us doing this podcast. You know what I mean? Right. And that's because we love the game and we love competing and we love talking about the competitive side of the game. But we also like sharing our experiences and our stories. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to start back from the beginning. Now, the very very beginning is. You know, are you going like pre podcast or we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna intro with pre podcast. Okay. Then we're gonna go right in. Like I know you, you and Matt Jordan played the game a lot longer than I have. Uh, in quotes, as, so, as much as you could. Yeah, I mean, I so I heard about this game through myself actually. Like I found it online. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw that Square was releasing it mm-hmm. and that they were making it and that like it was gonna be. Like a ne- the next trading card game, right? Not sure. I say next, it, like it, it was coming out. Yeah. Uh, so I pre-ordered my box and my starters immediately, like literally first day I saw. It. I don't even think anybody was aware. Mm-hmm. Uh, I messaged Matt. I messaged Jake from Fighting Game Community. Yeah, I remember yeah. Jake because Jake had saw it too. Yeah, Jake Gardner. Yeah, I remember. Um, I don't think he ended up buying into it at all. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't really talked to him about the game. He'll retweet my stuff every now and then, but uh, mm-hmm. he's a big Final Fantasy fan too. Um, so it was gonna be us three at first. And then I think, again, I think Jake just ended up not buying. Mm. Matt ended up pre-ordering about a couple weeks later, which mm. ended up being a big deal. Oh, yeah. Um, so th- I'm talking, this is like July or August of the year that the game was supposed to come out. Like so like 2016? Septem- September, October? Yeah. Yeah, I believe this is 2016. I believe that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so then I got I got my box in like the, the week it came out. Mm-hmm. And I remember opening it and like reading through all the cards. I hadn't seen like any list of full cards. I was basically like opening it and reading what the cards. So did. it was all fresh. Yeah, everything was fresh. Um, Matt did not get his boxes. Matt's were, Matt's were delayed, but he Amazon gave him like an extra box or something because oh, it got delayed. Even better. So he ended up getting like a second box, but he didn't get his box until Opus Two was already released. Oh jeez. So we played on Octagon for mm-hmm. the first few days. Um, we played with another guy that we played Final Fantasy fourteen with. Mm. Um, and he would play with us, and we would just build, like, random decks. I'd mostly play, like, Mono Fire, Fire Wind, like, unblockable stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt instantly started going to, like, Golbez. Yep. Um, then I couldn't buy qu- any more cards. Like, you could, I couldn't find them. I couldn't get packs. Mm-hmm. Couldn't get anything. Matt couldn't get his boxes. So at that point, I was just like, all right, I'm not buying anymore until we figure out, like, what's going on. I'll just play online. Yeah. And so I played on Octeon. Opus 2 came out. We continued to play on Octagon. Matt got two boxes of each. Mm-hmm. So Matt had physical product. Occasionally, while we were out playing fighting games, Matt would bring two decks and we'd play. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually it was like Golbez and Mono Earth at the sure. time. Um, so I would usually play Mono Earth because Matt wanted to play Golbez. Sure. Uh, that's when Matt, I think, ran into Curtis, which we'll get into like in one of our episodes, which was yep. kind of funny. And then, yeah, I mean, we stopped because we couldn't get shit. Like, yeah. I couldn't find no. None of the stores were selling it. I remember asking you around this time. I was trying like because I, I knew you liked Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hey, there's a game. It's actually really good. Like yeah. it was still really good. I still thought it was really good." Yeah, and I remember telling you that Battlegrounds actually because I remember seeing it on the shelves at Battlegrounds. Yeah, like, oh hey, I think that was like middle of Opus Two by the time they yeah. got their stuff. And yeah, uh-huh. you were like you were saying like Battlegrounds might have it, but at the time I called up there, they didn't have it. Mm-hmm. I think this is like when Austin was pushing for it at the yep. time, and he was probably going to Pocket, but I didn't know what Pocket was. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a local store here, which I think is closed now. Dragons Den. Oh, Dragons Den. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're long yeah, closed. They yeah. were open back then. Mm-hmm. They didn't have product. One of Jacks was telling me, "Oh, we're never carrying that." Like I, I called up there like three times, and they're mm-hmm. like, "We're never carrying that." Spoiler alert: They carry it now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and we play there every Thursday. Yeah, never say never. <laughs> um, so I mean, it was it was a dark time, I guess. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I stopped because I was like, I'm just not gonna go back to that. It's a waste of my time. I'm gonna keep playing fighting games. 
because uh, I could actually play fighting games. Street Fighter Five was still fresh. I was still playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I hate it. <laughs> uh, I, I still play sometimes, but I don't like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, and then I stopped, and then we didn't talk about it for probably almost a year, I guess. And, mm-hmm. and I remember seeing on Facebook that Battlegrounds was having Opus Four pre-release. Yeah, that's, and I remember you messaged me on Facebook. And it was like, hey, there's a pre-release, and I was, I had, I, I was. I originally was going up there to play Magic that day, but then I was like, eh, you know what? It it was, me and Magic have a love-hate relationship. Like, if I, like, if standards getting ready to rotate, I typically don't play it. Um, If I think, if I just don't really like what's happening in the game, I don't play it. And, like, that Opus 4 pre-release happened. That's when I had first, like, met, like, a lot of the guys from Fredericksburg. But I was, I had, I remember... Like, really, I played the game only one other time, like, at Matt's house. Like, he showed me how to play Golbez or something yeah, like that. Yeah, we were there, and we had shown you, because, Gold, like, Golbez is really popular. Yeah, them. and I, I like combo decks. Yeah. And I remember um, the day of the pre-release, um, I was like, all right, that was months ago. I need y'all to give me the crash course. So I learned how to play the game, like, on the spot, like, right there. And, like, there were still rules we weren't super familiar with. Oh, yeah. The time. yeah. I and mean, we knew the basics. Yeah, and, the, um, and this, to me, was when, like, the game really started to pick up. At least for us, for sure. I, yeah. I feel like probably for most people, if they stuck it out, mm-hmm. Opus 3 was probably when like everything became readily available sure. for the most part, and you could get packs and boxes when you needed to. Like, nice. Opus 3 release. I think Opus 2 got to a point right before Opus 3 release. It kind of stabilized where, there. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but so, I remember I remember being hooked the minute I saw, I think the first pack I opened for my pre-release had a Setzer in it. I was like, oh shit, Final Fantasy VI, I'm in. Oh, I think we had told you before because the set had been spoiled that we had told you like, oh, they're they're finally putting six cards yeah. in. The and you know me, I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I didn't really like register until like I saw that setzer, and I was like, oh man, this guy's I, this guy seems like he's really good too. He searches and he can like take something out of commission for a turn. I'm in. Yeah. And I ended up pulling like a bunch more like six cards. I ended up going four and one at that pre-release. So I was like, okay, I'm in. This yeah, is I think, fun. I think the first one I also went four and one. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I was also four and one. Yep. And. Um, it was the first pre-release I'd played in since Versus, I think. Yeah, yeah, or the same. any card game. Well, no, I take that back. I did play in, like, Kaladesh and, like, some Magic pre-releases, but I, I like this one a lot better. I, I felt like the... I don't know. I, I, I like the fact they gave you dice. There was a lot of cool presentation. Like, I, I, And then, you know, I was hooked. Like, the game was a lot of fun. I remember we... Uh, like, that's when, again, I, we first met a lot of the Pocket Guys. And then we started, like... Did the Pocket Guys come? Oh, uh, no, not the Pocket guys. The, yeah, uh, the, the, guys the YHP there. guys. Jesus. Yeah, because it was... Uh, Sorry, Pocket on the Brain. It was Curtis, uh, Jason, Adam Street, Sean. Um, uh, I don't know, Jason. Hunter, Hunter was there. Yep, that was the first time you know we had met Hunter Nance. Uh, he was actually my loss in the... Uh, uh, who else was there? I feel like there was more people there that we're forgetting. I don't think I, I don't think Stephen was there. I don't think he was either. Um, and then we also had a second day, which you didn't go to. Yeah, I had to work the next day. Um, but I was already hooked at that point. I was like, I'm going. Mm-hmm. I'd already put my binders back together. Like, I grabbed all my cards that I still had left. Because I still had original print, like the first print Opus 1 cards, and I put them all in a binder. Um, and right after that Sunday, I instantly bought Opus 3 boxes, Opus 2 boxes. Like, yeah. I was already done. Um, and then I, like, pre-ordered Opus 4 boxes. And then I had the two kits. So I was already ready to go. Yep, and I remember I had bought my I had bought my Opus Four box, and I had the fucking God box. Yeah. So then, I, I mean, at least for me, because like I felt like I feel I don't think you played for about a week or so after the pre release. Yeah. Um. So this is before still Opus Four hadn't been released yet. Yep. Uh, we found I found out that like okay, Battlegrounds has Sunday tournaments, mm-hmm. and I was like, Matt, want to go? Like, let's go. Uh, I have enough cards now, like. I'll just build something that I want to play, and I'll play it. And at the time, it was Dragoons. I was like, I'm yep. just going to play Dragoons. That's what I have the cards for. Mm-hmm. Let's play it. Um, so we got there. I had Dragoons ready to go. Matt had, like, Mono Earth or something. And it was just me and Matt sitting there Yay! for about an hour. And then they were like, okay, I guess we're not playing. We're not doing it. So uh, that's when that guy, John, who we haven't seen in a long time, yeah, he was there. We played for a little while and then left. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, is it going to happen again? Like That was like my, going through my mind. I was like... I was like, we just got back into this thing. Everybody was at the pre-release, so I'm thinking, like, you know, people are going to come back out. Yep. This is their regular day. And even in my mind, too, I mean, me and Matt, because we're coming from the fighting game community where I was friends with Robin, Mm -hmm. and we helped run everything. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I'm not doing that again. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I want to just play. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that didn't happen. 
<laughs> Turns out. So, yeah, I mean, I was kind of disappointed because I was like, man, it's going to die again. And I just bought the stuff, and this is going to be me and you playing. Uh, then it picked up, which was pretty sweet. So we ended up taking, kind of taking the reins. Yeah. Um, became, like, admins of the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Which we had pushed for for a while, by the way. Moved it, moved it from Sundays to Tuesdays. Yep, that, I think that was the big catalyst. And then I remember, like when I after I got my Opus Four box, I was like, I'm I'm building Final Fantasy VI. Like I'm going to build a deck. I and I know you guys had a lot of bulk from older sets, so I could like kind of fill in the blanks of like, ah, oh, here's a bunch of here's a bunch of staple cards. Like I remember y'all gave me a bunch of bulk from the earlier yeah, sets. Yeah, Matt had a lot more bulk than me, but yeah. Yeah, and then like, and then I remember we were showing, and then uh, that's where we met Austin. Like Austin started showing back up after, and, and again, there were nights where I wasn't able to come because of work. Right. So y'all had gone through a lot more of like the dry spell. Yeah, but then again, it started to pick up, and then that kind of go. That's like kind of goes into the podcast, right? Because I think. Well, first we had done like the three v three. Yeah, we did the three v three. That happened. We we went up to YHP a few times, played in a few of their weeklies. Um. I don't think we had met the pocket guys at the time yet, really. Not yet. We didn't meet them until Kef- Charlotte. Kef- oh, yeah, Charlotte. Oh, yeah, Charlotte. That's right, yeah. Then we went to Charlotte. That We had already decided like that's where we are going to go because that was the biggest tournament that was close to us. That yep. was the Summoner Series. That's actually a really good segue into the, the first episode. All right, so... Well, we had already played the Kefka Cup in the first episode, too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of those tournaments because it was Charlotte. Then, like, the week after was the Kefka Cup. Yeah. And, you know, early on in the podcast days, because your brother got into the game, too. Yeah. And he enjoyed it. And he was actually a staple on the podcast for the first few episodes. I think I think more than the first few. I think, like, yeah. the first four or five. Yeah, and I, and I was just a treat to have him on. So, yeah, like, you know, we and we had decided after we had, you know, we spent a lot of time, like, deck building and actually, like, really wanting to take this game seriously. That, like, yeah, you, you found ARG Charlotte. And I was like, well, fuck it. Let's go. It's a four-hour drive. Yep. So I remember the night before we we hung out at Drew's. Yep. Tested. Played, played all night. Played all night. Got to the hotel. You know, it it, it 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 took me back. It reminded me of the old days of like the fighting game days, the versus days. You know, where we would just, all right, let's go play a game and travel. So that's what our first episode covered. Like, hey, and, and you know, one of the big things about Charlotte is, you know, we saw a lot of the um, YHP guys again. Yep. Uh, this is where we met Adam Duncan and like the pocket guys. I remember my first interaction with Adam Duncan is he was looking for a foil cactar, and I was like, I happen to have one in like on me. Yep. So here you can have it, and um, <clears throat> and then uh, no, no, I didn't have it on me. I was like, hey, because the that's when they mentioned the tournament at um at pocket like sorry at pocket the next week after this event. I was like, yeah, we'll go. I'll bring it. I'll, we're going. I'll bring it to you. And I right. brought it to him that day. And he traded me. He gave me like a foil rare Terra for it, which was a Fair trade. So, we got there, and of the top 16, they only did top 8 cut. You made top 8. Um, I know we all did very well. Yeah, I good. went 4-2, and two and I finished 10th. I want to say it was like a 40 or somewhere in the yeah. 40s. And I was so it. amped. I was so fucking amped sitting there when we saw all these players, and I was like, man, this feels good. Mm-hmm. This feels good to be sitting here playing cards that weren't magic. Like That felt good to me, and that's where we met like Sam Prime. Because I remember we had been watching like their podcasts and stuff. I, I had seen a couple. Um, I was more aware of Sam because I had followed the Petit Cups. Yeah. So there was two Petit Cups that had before that. One was Another one California. Tampa. One was California because it had been won by um, Azul. Yep. And playing Mono Lightning, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then another one was won by Sam who was playing Water Earth. And I believe this was before Andy won his, but I could yeah. be wrong on the timing. Mm-hmm. There might have been three by then. Yeah, because the, Ve- the Vegas one, that Okimoto won. Oh, uh, that one too, yeah. Yeah. I played that. I played a, a modifier, modified version of his list at Charlotte. Yeah, and so did Drew. Yep. Yeah. But it was a. We had a lot of fun. Like Charlotte was when we finally got our first like competitive taste, and then we saw that you know of the top sixteen, like ten of them were from Virginia. Adam Duncan finished ninth. I finished tenth. You made top eight. Nathan Horn finished second. Stephen and Curtis were top eight. Yep, they were third and fourth. I think when with the final standings, Jason was in sixteen. Matt finished fifteenth. So it was like, man. You know, everybody, everybody that we went there with, other than Drew, like finished in a very favorable place. Drew could have done better. He, he made it. He made a pretty bad mistake. Oh yeah, he did. He swung into a Renoa, which yeah. we mentioned on the podcast. So like, it was a, it was a good day of cards. It was a great time. And then we did it again next week. That's when we went down to the first. This was the first villain tournament at Pocket, mm-hmm. and this was the Kefka Cup. Yeah. Um, and I remember. You were so burnt out on monsters after Charlotte. I was. It was. It was not easy to play. That deck was taxing. It was a lot of thinking. 
That's why I jumped off of it like the day before. <laughs> I abandoned ship the night before. Yeah, so I remember it was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could play something with Kefka and win the Kefka Cup? Yeah, or play. I just, I just want to play Saban and be stupid. And yeah. so we put together this uh, this Fire Earth like unbreakable list with like Saban and Kefka and Lednar and like Hecaton chairs. And uh, we actually both ended up doing very well. I went X1 in Swiss, made top eight. You went like X2, snuck into top eight, but then shit on everybody to win the whole thing. Yeah, I lost to Danny and someone else in Swiss. And I misplayed into Danny. I remember misplaying into a Delita, I believe. Mm-hmm. Or no, it was a Sid Alstain. He was playing Mono Ace. Yep. Um, and then uh, I don't remember who my second loss was. Mm-hmm. But it was I was definitely X2. And I snuck in. And then, yeah, I... I Oh yeah, it was a uh, water. I lost to water and you, wind. And you did. I got milled out. Yep. By Riku. Mm-hmm. And then I beat him in the first round mm-hmm. of top eight. Yep. And then I won my next round of top eight, and I don't remember. And then I played Danny, and that's when we had the stare. Oh, off. the forty-five second stare down, which we've talked about multiple times. I remember mm-hmm. I said I made top eight. I had lost to Hunter Nance, who the week prior I beat him in Charlotte. So like that. That's kind of the beginning of that of that rivalry. But then it was like, man. Two weeks in a row, two tournaments, two sets of good results. Like, man, like we're on to something here. And that's when we, you know, we put all that into the podcast, and that made up really the first episode. Yeah, and we didn't know we were going to do it like weekly. It was yeah, just going to be a thing, just, and it was just going to be the podcast. It wasn't going to be anything else, really. Yeah, we just wanted to do this for fun to like because there was no I, content. I, I didn't even really expect it to do that well. I was yeah, just like, yeah, I'll just do it. Yeah, whatever. for shits and giggles, to just yeah. take our, ra- our 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 ramblings about this game and like record it and do something with it. Yep. And then, like, right after that was when spoilers started. Yeah, Opus 5 spoilers started. And so we, we did, like, a whole episode on what the spoilers had been at to that point. And it's kind of funny. A lot of our assessments on those spoilers ended up being, like, pretty accurate. For the know? most part. I think we were hyped on a few cards that we were overhyped on. But, I mean, and then we swung in a miss on a couple, like, yeah. uh, Thaumaturge were, were looking at oh, you. Oh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I, I've said that many times. I, I misvalued that card for the same reasons I've already said. You know, I thought because Argaf was bad, it was bad. And yep. I and then like, I remember really being real hype. I was like, oh, man, Sky Pirates are finally going to get their day. They're going to get their thing. <laughs> burpa, 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 burpa. Yep. And then uh, we were, I remember we were really high on going through the spoilers. Like Birdman, uh, Zhou Yu, we were just yep. like, oh, man, this guy's dumb. Then we saw Light Bomb. We're like, man, this guy's real dumb, too. Yep. And then we finally saw like cards like Wall. I remember like seeing Wall and be like, wow, this guy's good. But I like Vaughn better. Yeah. And then... Uh, Turns out, like, some of the things we were talking about, like, the cards we wanted to see in pre-release, which was the next episode talking about pre-release, which somehow I made top four with my pile of garbage. Yeah, I won, right? Yeah, you won. Because, yeah. uh, and I remember we were sitting across from each other in the pairings, and I gave you the box that had, yeah. like, fucking Zoyu and Vaughn. Like, you had, like, the gas we were literally just talking about the day before. Yeah, because that was... That was the pre-release where you and Matt played, right? And Matt had, like, double Arcanist. Yeah, and yeah. I won because I had a 50-50 shot. I had to attack with the right one first. Because if, yeah. I, if I attacked with the Psycom Warden or whatever it was, yeah, the Psycom Warden instead yeah. of Gabranth, I would have just lost. Yep, yeah. and then I think my one loss was to Steven because I let him haste a tomato with the Yeah, with Gadone. Yeah, it turns out that wasn't root. That wasn't <laughs> a, a, a real thing you could do. Didn't realize until after the match. It didn't matter. It's not like you did on purpose. Um yeah, and then after that was when the Ohio, the Ohio Petit came. Yeah, so leading up to that, um, we had found out, I want to say, um, we, we had started mentioning that we had seen this event happening in Ohio, another Petit Cup, and I was like, man, I kind of want to go to this. Yeah, and we were already planning to go to Boston at this point. Like, I yeah, because... Yeah. I had already talked to... Uh, crap, why can't I remember now? My fighting game buddy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was agreeing with us, let us stay up there. Yeah, which, you know, what a great... Uh, I'll never forget the cannoli, but we'll get there. Yeah, it was really good. So, like, I, I remember talking about going, and Stephen and Kurt, uh, that we have, you know, we started becoming a little bit closer with because we've gone up to their weeklies a few times at this yeah. point. They're talking about going to Ohio as well. And yeah, I was like, nope, not making that drive. Yeah, and I was like, well, fuck it. I'll <laughs> Plus, go. it was the day after Opus Five release. Oh yeah, because we we had um and we, everybody was we were we were all really high on Mono Earth, which yep was a pretty good assessment at the time because sure. a lot of people up there were playing Mono Earth as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because Wall was really good. Uh, uh, Star Sybil had come Star out. Star Sybil, um, Cam. Uh, what, what other new, like, uh, the new Yang had come out. Cockatrice, yeah. like, all these... But really- it was really Wool, and Wool was, like, the hardest card to get at the time, because everybody already knew that card was going to be dumb. Yep, and I remember, like, your brother had pulled... He'd gotten, like, his playset out of pre-release pack, so had Matt, and, um... I had zero. 
But yeah, I had gotten two out of my box when I finally got it. But then we got screwed on product that weekend because it got the set got the late, like the shop got it late. Yeah, like the UP, uh, sorry, FedEx had kind of screwed their shipment over. So like the, the GTA, like, there was a distribution yeah. issue that ended Buck- up Buckley us. was nice enough to go up to Fredericksburg to get like boxes for us to have exactly and, and let us buy our case. But it's, I think that was already after you had left. Right, it was. So thankfully. Um, and a couple other things. You didn't go also because, A, there was the Battlegrounds tournament that weekend. Also, you were on the Crystal Tower. Like, that weekend, you were actually on that episode. Yeah, that kind of came up, like, after I'd already decided not to go. But, yeah. Then, okay. So, well, both of those things happened. So, it's not like you didn't have any action that weekend. You had something that you wanted to do, and you, you were able to play some games. And I remember, um, so, Stephen had, uh, Curtis and Stephen went in on a case. They got their three boxes. Stephen got, Curtis and his three did not pull a single wall. And at this point, I needed, I needed two more. To be able to play the Mono Earth deck. But I had also had a backup deck. I had Fire Ice. Just in case that I wasn't able to get these walls. And all I did... I, I just had six Opus uh, 5 cards in that deck. It was three Mateus, two Birdman, and one Vaughn. I was like, I can play this. It's aggressive. It's stupid. I'll just have this in case I don't get the walls. Well, we get the walls. And that whole time we're playtesting. And I'm frustrating the shit out of Curtis and Steven... With just hasting locks, hasting genesis, just having these really crazy swingy tempo plays, and then just swinging with the Sid Reigns. I don't give a shit what's on the oh Mateus. Like, like the card, the, the Opus Five cards that I put in the deck were super relevant, super relevant, and super effective. So ended up top fouring up in Ohio, which felt really good. I uh, met a lot of really cool guys up there. I met Steven, met Sean. Um, two real. I uh, met the the uh, Wellsbachers were up there. Mm-hmm. So, like, got a chance to, like, you know, see who these players were, put names to faces. They were like, oh, that's the guy who did who did this at Nationals, did this at Worlds. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Hope I get to play him. Right. Never got a chance to play him. But, you know, I ended up having a really good day of cards. And you he, lost to Corey, right? Uh, I lost, guy. yeah, I lost to Corey from FF decks. Yeah, he we plays lost with Wells Blockers. He yeah, plays. yeah, he, he's a really good player. I know he's qualified for Nats. Um, he, he took my qualification from yeah, field. that's yeah. right, that's right. And uh, he beat me in top four at Ohio, which, you know, Again, the, the the three cockatrices there at the end were kind of a blowout. But had a great time up there, and that was kind of like the first time I was like, all right, cool. I, I'm, I'm starting to see consistent results here. And then I know you, again, you were on the Crystal Tower podcast, and you were, I know, at the Battlegrounds tournament, which was kind of small. It was like eight people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did terribly. It was try- I was trying to redo Fire Earth less, but I like ended up taking a lot, a lot of cards and ended up becoming like, like Earth, Fire, Splash, and then it was bad. Oh yeah, and that's th- this was the weekend. A, a couple things came up. The Adams Audible was created. Uh, just all, all kinds of just goofy shit. Like old reliable. Well, no, old reliable didn't come until the next episode. Yeah, which was Boston. Yeah, this is where man. This is where I think I felt like it really started to come together for us. Like this is where we first got like really we got to see like oh we got to, oh hey Sam how you doing again you know we got to see him again got to meet Jonathan and Andy from Okimoto. Florida Okimoto Brian Berkeley like Greg Cole. This is where we started, uh, Colin Rupert. This is where we got to meet yeah. some of these Pennsylvania guys. Well, Colin guys. Rupert was in Charlotte. Was he? Oh, yeah, that's right. He was. Yeah. He didn't have a good day of cards that week. That's weekend. probably the last time I've seen him produ- right. perform poorly at cards. Yes, and uh, I forgot <laughs> so Michael Hunsinger was there at Charlotte. Yeah. Also, was Andrew Good. Uh, Mike beat me. Andrew also made top eight, I believe. He did. He did, and so did Mike. Yep. And then at Boston, we got to meet all those guys. We also got to meet John Schreiner, who also top 16 Yep. Um, that was... That was the first North American yeah, crystal. Rob, too. Rob yeah. yeah. It was just such a good time. That's where we were like business cards. Yeah. And we fucked up. We should have got business cards. Yeah, because we were still trying to like, you know, find our way. And, I mean, we still kind of are, but it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah, this were, these were like the raw days where we would just like, you know, just, I don't know. We, we still kind of ramble sometimes, but we were just like really like just... Really, so like you know, like what is it? What, what, what do they say? Like wet in the te- uh, wet, in, uh, wet behind the ears. Wet, wet in the teeth. What the fuck is that? <laughs> wet yeah. behind the ears, and we were just trying to, you know, figure stuff out. You know, I know, um, like that was, you know, we were hanging out with your friend. Um, I cannot remember his name for the life of me. Him and his roommate, like he played Rocket League like the whole yeah. time. I, I played Street Fighter with him too. Yeah, and you, you, you were on pad and you crushed him. But you know, he took us around Boston. We went to that awesome cannoli shop. No, it's uh, it's the first time I've Jimmy. been. Jimmy, my man, J- Jimmy from Boston. Yeah. He's from here. But... Yeah, he moved to Boston. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he, he was one of the beach guys. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of time, a lot, a lot of good, a lot of good times up there. Um, you know, I had really good matches with like Greg Cole. Um, 
I made I, I've met Jonathan in top sixteen. I'd made the cut, and like me and Jonathan kind of like bonded that you know, and we we've actually been like really cool ever since. You know. Yeah, I love talking to John. Dude, we awesome. had a conversation the other day actually uh-huh. uh, about Disney <coughs> movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love John. He's a cool dude. Yeah, this um, is like, and this is where we kind of met these guys and like really kind of created these like the, the the these these friendships. You know what I mean? So it was a good time, like really really good time. And then we came back. Not much had really happened for a while. Yeah, we um, did like a meta report episode because people were complaining about tempo ice at the time. Yeah, turns out, turns still out good. I mean, yeah. it was good. Dead. There was a reason I played it. Um, I wanted to play Carbuncle really bad, but mm-hmm. I wasn't ready. But then I went the next day, right after Boston, we, we caught the, and I just, like, Yeah, the, yeah we went to, you went to Frederick's Yeah, and I yeah. shat on people with it. it was, I mean, it's an awesome deck. I love the deck. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, David Cox's deck, actually. Oh, yeah. And the deck was real good. I still think that deck is really good. I it's hope just... he plays it at Nats. I, I want to see, like, his newest iteration of it. I think it's good. Um, yeah, and then after that, we did a Fredericksburg episode. Yeah, we went up to the local. I actually, I ended up winning that local on Mono Earth. Yeah, I think I got second. You did because uh, we had that weird game where, like, I think you saw I I, I was not going to attack, but I did, and it was it flipped the Adele that would have won you the game into damage. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I can just yeah, I yeah, because I was playing Wind Lightning with Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and that was ended up being pretty fun. And then we did the uh, that was this was where it all kind of started coming full circle because we talked about community building. Yeah, and this is where we had the famous notebook moment where Matt and Curtis realized, realized they knew each other. Before. They they were, they were the they were the ones playing in the early early days of the game, and it, the the look on like Matt and Curtis's face when they realized it was them mm-hmm. it was priceless. And uh, that's also the day we grounded Steven from eating candy on the podcast. Yeah, I gave him the the shittiest of looks. Oh man, he I <laughs> never heard a Snickers wrapper make so much noise, <laughs> but. Yeah, like that was a lot of fun. Then the next episode was the That's when, when Drew came back on. Yeah, Drew Drew had come back. Um he had disappeared for a while because uh, you know, he's had some uh some like good news. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean he's having twins. Yeah, he's having I'm, twins. I'm yeah. gonna have twin nieces soon. Yeah, and he yeah, you know, and you know, I, I, I don't know if you had known at the time or if he had just kinda disappeared. I, I stuff. knew but I was I couldn't tell anyone. No, that's fair. And I, I just figured, you know, whatever, it happens. I I, I get it, he's married. Yeah. And then um, that was the the I, um, that was the battlegrounds monthly. Yeah, and I let him borrow monsters, and we played Mono Earth. Yep. Yeah, um, we we uh, ended up making top. It was me, you, Drew, and Nathan in top four. Yep, and we split. Yeah. Um, and then we made sure everyone got a pack. I yep. Remember that. And yeah, Drew ended up winning with monsters. Yeah, uh, because he beat me in finals yeah. pretty fucking yeah. clean. I mean, Mono Earth was pretty bad. It was pretty oh, bad big matchup. time. And it was a deck I was trying to kind of hide a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. And then, the, then Drew just gives it to the break zone. Like, here you go. No, he didn't give it to him. The break zone kind of just did it, which is fine. I mean, it was, uh-huh. it was open results. So we put him on the yeah. decks. Yeah, and I remember the Laurent messaged me and, like, apologized. I was like, hey, man, no need it's to fine. apologize. It's there. Yeah, you deck, know, decks gonna, are on paper. They're public knowledge at that yeah, point. I'm not going to be mad about it. Um, And the deck changed pretty good. Pretty Because I was already, we were already planning to go to Kansas City at that time, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's and right. the deck had... The deck changed a lot from then to Kansas City anyways, mm-hmm. so it, it wasn't that big a deal. It just made people more aware, and it wasn't like we didn't talk about it on the podcast anyways, mm-hmm. about how good that deck was, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, and um, trying to think, the next episode was... We were that, talk- that was when we talked about like kind of training regimen for like yeah. um, how to prepare, how we prepare for big events and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the episode of that was like after that was like their tenth episode where we talked about what we wanted stuff. to what we wanted to see from Opus Six. Like yep. I, I remember, um, none of it came true. Um, I really wanted the six package to have a little bit more, which I I felt what it has is fine, but it's still lacking in a few areas. Like it got no searcher, it got no like sacrifice these guys for this kind of effect. Like I, I really wanted to see more synergies. Yep. But it turns out it's good. What 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 we got was really really good. For um, sure. But that was it. Then the uh, episode after that's the birth of Top Eight Johnny. Yes, yeah. Top Eight Johnny became became a staple. And this is also too during this time during this like this month here. That's when like our local scene really started taking off. We started having like fifteen to twenty men. Yeah, like Tuesdays. Ron, Colin, all those guys had started. They, they yeah. showed up like on the early half of that. So Thursday, like yeah, Rita. I saw Rita again for the first time yeah. while um, Ron and Colin were there. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had a few people. It wasn't enough to fire on Thursday. Yeah, and I know a lot of those guys are students, yep. so they don't really. Like, 
I, I, I we kind of like, right now just kind of bring it to current. Like our Tuesdays are kind of being a little bit smaller because a lot of the guys that show up are students and they probably just can't work make their way out there because yeah. they've got class or have to study or whatever. And it's which fine. is fine. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Because we know like during breaks it'll be right back to uh, you know to where it was. So this was the Memorial Day cookout tournament that the grill fell through. So we ended up having like pizza and Johnny bringing like wings and onions and shit from uh, Outback. from Outback. Hashtag crikey. This is the birth of hashtag crikey. And that was a real good time. It was an absolute blast. Um, I don't think we played at this event. No, we commentated. Yeah, we didn't play this one. Was that the first one we commented? Yeah, this, this was the first the first event we streamed. Okay. So that was the beginning of our stream. And oh, yeah, because Ron played Monsters, right? Yeah, Ron, okay. Ron, Ron won. Ron was actually the winner of this tournament because yeah. he, he won with Monsters. And uh, turns out around that time, you could misplay with that deck and win because Drew had done it the month before at the Monthly. Yeah, it but it was, it was a real good time. Like, we got a lot of positive feedback on the stream. Like, it was the I, I, that, that was when I kind of got that bug. I was like, man, I like being in the commentary booth. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Which leads up to the next episode. This was the Zorn and Thorn Cup. Yeah. I remember you and I were testing ice water for it. And I was like, I like this deck because I was playing it at Locals. And then I go 0 and 2. Like, this was my scrubbed. I, I scrubbed out so fucking hard here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because I remember I lost to Col- I had to play Colin round one. He beat me. Then I had to play Sarah with my Mono Earth deck in round two. Oh, and she just just mopped the floor with me. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to drop and I'm just going to get into the commentary booth. Mm-hmm. And uh, Hunter Nance ended up winning that tournament against you in the finals. The defending champ had to had to come back and get the straps. And uh, he was on Monsters. You were on Ice Water, which does pretty well against Monsters. Yeah, I didn't see some of the stuff I needed. You didn't see any Edwards uh, or shit like that. I mean, I saw all the Stragos, but he just replayed stuff. Yeah, I didn't see the stuff that I needed to, like, cancel the big summons when mm-hmm. I needed it. Well, and also, too, like, it was a good tournament. And I think if you've seen that stuff, the match would have gone a little bit differently. Oh, yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't like Hunter played bad. Oh, no, he yeah. played great. And, I mean, I made a few misplays, too. But the uh, the podcast afterwards is where we finally caught up with Austin and Adam, who had gone to Toronto Crystal Cup. Yep. And this is where we learned about the mythical five-color ninjas. Yep. And just their, their trek through Canada and learning that Toronto, you say, I'm going to Toronto, it's like saying, I'm going to the West Coast. Mm-hmm. You know, that was just, just a good time hanging out, telling stories. Like, that was a really good podcast. We ended up having pizza afterwards, just shooting the shit and chilling. Then the episode after that, this was prep for the Crystal Cup, if I'm not mistaken, because this wasn't us actually there yet. Yeah, I think it was. And the next one, I think, was we talked about the rest of the Crystal Cup results and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we, uh, I know, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of lump these two together. Uh, Crystal Cup Kansas City was a lot of fun. You and Matt were smart, and y'all flew. Uh, yeah. I was stuck in a car with Steven, Curtis, uh, Travis, and this is where I, where I met Kyle DeGraff. We had met him for the first time. Um... And that was 16 hours in this car from Fredericksburg to Kansas City. We will never make that drive again. Next time we're flying or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll, I will take the, the 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 Chinatown rocket bus yeah, before. Yeah, I mean, the flight sucked, but it wasn't like... I'd rather, I still would rather do that than drive. Oh, it was rough, but it, but it was fun. Like, I have fun with those guys. We actually had, a, you know, other than us being cramped in the car, which, you know, five people in an Avalon was rough. Um, but it could have been worse. That's why I chose mm-hmm. to drive most of the time. But we got there. Um, I know you had made top 16. Curtis made top 16. Kyle made top 16. Hunter, um, Hunter made top 16. Hunter made top 16. Uh, Sam ended up winning. This is where we finally yeah. met Cody. Yep. Um, I remember the the uh, this this was the best part of the weekend. We're sitting there just registering our decks, and Cody comes up to me and says, uh, Hey, man, where's top eight Johnny? I was... I just yeah. I was like you know because I, I had seen him comment and stuff on our, on our post yeah but we had never met him never met him and then it was just like oh shit and we you know we've been fast friends ever since um so we we still got to get Cody Snodgrass and Top Eight Johnny and just like oh we we got we got to get them sitting at an outback and just we got you know we got make we got to you know record this thing mm-hmm. but you know good Crystal Cup wait we, that's when we did a couple videos like you know they're on Interviews, our Facebook page which we need to start doing more of yeah those for are sure. really good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then, After you know, that was kind of the lead up to the op- to Opus 6. Mm-hmm. Because I think the next episode was like a bunch of spoilers. Yep. And talking about like qualifiers. And then the episode after that was when we actually went to the pre-release. Mm-hmm. Um, we did several pre-releases did three. that day. That was yeah. a lot of fun. That's uh, 
the last one was where Jason just kind of lost his marbles and yeah. just started talking I was like just an angry. Laughing the entire time. Yeah, yeah well, that was the episode we did at uh, at the IHOP. Yeah, because I I won I won the first and the third pre release mm-hmm. and got second or third in the second one. and My only loss was to Curtis. Yeah, yeah. So I did pretty good. Done pretty good in Opus Six Sealed, actually. Yeah, turns out, yeah. turns out. So that was a lot of fun. And then um, the next episode. Now we're starting to get in, like we're, we're starting to get close. Now we're getting into um, like LQ season. Yeah, so that's when they started to announce the stuff, and then we went to North Carolina, and Curtis won his. You got second. Yeah, Ethan, oh yeah, this, Ethan this got was fifth, and I got fourth. Yeah, this this was kind of the beginning of like the like the kind of my, my dark moments here because I know Ethan actually wanted to come. Did very well. Like he did very, very well. Um, you know, me and Curtis played in the finals. You and I top four was me, you, Curtis, and his name was Rob. He, yeah, he was also Rob, the mono ice player. He was my one loss in Swiss. Yeah. Yep, yep. And um, I remember you and I played in top four. That that turbo mirror was just a shit show. We were just like, laughing. Oh. The entire yeah, time. it was like, oh, I hit Jill. Oh, I hit Jill. Yeah, it was, it was just a that game could have 100% gone either way. Then I go to play against Curtis in the finals. Take game one. He shits on me game two. Game three, he just flips the one card in his deck that he had left that he could have flipped to win on the experts, which was Star Civil, and I just watched it go away. I wasn't upset. I was just like, man, that was because I had gone undefeated all day. I had a really good day of cards. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. And that's when we started realizing, that, man, these, these qualifiers are hard. Yeah, it's rough. You got to win or go home. Yep, and then after that, um, this is That's what where... we talked about, like, there was, like, a lot of toxicity stuff happening. We talked about... Yeah, people were having really shitty comments online about just kind of... There was this kind of... This is where we started seeing a little bit more of this elitist attitude coming from some people. And we were just like, hey, man. Like, we're all in this together. Like, even now, man. This, this is just a quick PSA. Blankets are on. Blankets have been on this whole time, you fools. <laughs> we, 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 we aptly named the episode Cultivate It. Don't piss on it. Yep. So be kind to each other. That's kind of where that whole thing started. And then the next two are Crystal Cup. Um, yeah, Gen- the Gen, Gen Con, Con, which was a lot of fun. Uh, turns out you had a pretty okay weekend, which yeah, I think we bad. all had a good weekend. It wasn't bad. Yeah, finished second in the Seal Crystal Cup, um, which was I was all- just outside the top sixteen and the mm-hmm. constructed also. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun there, and. Um, the the one of the you know just getting to see everybody again getting that was the best out. part yeah because yeah. we we had kind of our podcast has been you know really picking up a lot of steam and we got you know a lot and we've been talking back and forth to a lot of the west coast guys and a lot of people from the midwest and all these different scenes and now we're all here hanging out so you know the night we went out with, to dinner with cody john andy and uh jonathan's wife mm-hmm. um that was a really good time like and then the next night we're hanging out with greg and you know, Okimoto, Max Williams, like all those guys. Like just, just you know, Irvin. You know, I, I, my favorite part was hanging out there and just like I remember walking in the door of like their Airbnb, which was right up the street from us. For God's yep. sake, if we'd have known that, we'd have been there. You know, hanging out with them more. Like I walk in, they put me to work. Like here, I need you to play Turbo against Irvin so he can get ready for his matchup tomorrow. Um, so well, it's it was, funny if you listen to Jordan talk about. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you listen to the Crystal Tower with Jordan Dink on it. I haven't. I need to. And he talks about on there. He was like, "Man, Irvin must have really knew the Turbo matchup because he played like he knew it." <laughs> yeah. Because he talks. Uh, Jordan actually talks about like everybody else played wrong mm-hmm. against him a lot of the day, and mm-hmm. he felt like some of his wins came off people playing the wrong way. Sure. But when he played Irvin, he felt like Irvin knew what to do. Yeah. Um. So I thought that was kind of cool. I don't think Jordan really knew that he had practiced with us the night before, yeah. or really you. I mean, we had all said it was like well, me, yeah. you, and uh, you were playing. Okimoto's on the other side of the table, and you and we were playing Irvin, and we were literally just like, "We, I think you should do this instead of this." Yes, yeah. and we were like you know, on both sides because like that was the first time I had actually played the DGS version too. So I, I was yeah. like, we were both just kind of learning along the way. We we're like, "Wow, this line of play is stupid." Yeah, and. I remember we were like looking at Irv. It was like, man, you should probably not do that. You should probably just jam this wall yeah. in that Dottaluma. So, so he talks about, Jordan talks about that too. He's like, man, yeah, I think he's like, the game that he destroyed me was when he just goes, wall Alua. And I remember literally the night before we were talking, we were like, man, you, like, you should just hard mull for wall Dottaluma Alua. Yeah. And just jam it as mm-hmm. early as you can. Force him to have to deal with those forwards that can pressure him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's what he did. And he beat uh, Jonathan. Yeah. Was also on turbo. Yeah, that's the guy who beat me yeah. in my because I made the cut on the second day, which te- is top thirty-two. Yeah. So I made and I had to, all the mo- all the turbo was jammed in that corner. So it was me, uh, a guy named Wayne, Jordan, and Jonathan. And I, I ended up having to play. John- and Greg Cole was stuck in that corner too because I remember I was sitting next to Greg. He had to play Jordan. I had to play Jonathan. And 
I lost the dice roll, dice roll so I lost. And yeah, I think I DGS felt, was way better than yeah, my build. I think it also wins the mayor like really hard. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so. and um, you know, like it was just a really good weekend. And uh, one of my, one of my favorite parts of that weekend also was the letter I wrote on the back of my seal pool. Yeah. To the inevitable winner, like that, that he just was blew. on that episode with David too, or with uh, Crystal Tower too. David was on that episode. He talked about that too. That's so funny. Like yeah. I, I, I would have never guessed. And when you and remember, because I had gone back to the, because uh, I had dropped from Seal, because I'm not a Seal player. I, I'll say it as many times as I have to. So I went back to the Airbnb with Rob and Joe and Santos and them. Ended up like I was dead tired. I don't know how the fuck you did that on like an hour <laughs> of sleep. By the way, it's like second wind. I don't know. Yeah, you you were just, you were just on pure adrenaline and Hulkamania. <laughs> it was just, I don't know what you were doing. Yeah, but um, next time I'll just you know get I'll get the hair of a Chinese man. <laughs> yes, and the, <laughs> and skin, the skin of a hot, hot dog. dog. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes, but um, but it was a lot of fun, dude. And I I I, I can't wait to go. To <laughs> to another convention like that, Gen Con was just an absolute. I think Nats blast. is going to be just as fun, dude. I can't wait, and and that's when then after that we uh, we come back. Uh, me and Hunter Nance talking about bathrooms at Gen Con was just <laughs> fucking hysterical too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think, and then the next few are just like like a bunch of the rest of the qualifiers, pretty much. Like yeah, and, and also the next one too, because um, Hunter got kind of screwed out. The next well, that episode. was part of the Gen Con one. Yeah, that was the, the follow up to Gen Con. Yeah. You're right, and then the next two were yeah, it was. You know, the finish of the LQ, LQ season where you qualified, Steven qualified. Well, I had already qualified pr- prior to Gen Con. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because you, your Steven second qualified qualifier after. Went down. Yeah. That's right. Because I had lost to, um, I had lost, and so did Danny. Uh, yeah. Danny, because I lost, uh, I finished second at my, because I only went to three LQs. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I went to four because the one in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I did finished we- second at two of them. Yeah. Made top four in another one. We went back to North Carolina too, right? Yeah, that's the one I lost to Jason in top four. Yep, yep. After going like undefeated all day and just I had to beat Hunter in top eight. Like it was, and it was uh, like a 30 person tournament. Yeah, my, fatigue got to me in that event for sure. Oh, yeah. And then you, you got like, you got turboed like real hard. I got turboed and then I lost to Curtis because I misplayed a couple times. But oh, yeah. he, I think he would have beat me regardless. Right. Uh, I was on Scions that day, I remember. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then after that, it basically caught up at that point. Yeah, like, we, so. So like clearly we've just we've just really been enjoying ourselves, man. We're traveling to all these tournaments, like we're meeting all these really cool people that like that I can't wait like the journey's just beginning essentially, right? Like, you know, we've got Nats. Um well you guys have Nats. I've got the L C Q that I that is sold out and You still the, get to be there. Yeah, I mean I, you don't I, get to go in the venue, which sucks. That's Maybe fine. talk to the bricks on that, I mean, look, listen, that might be Matt Rice is doing stuff with him. That's what I'm saying. I might I I might be able to work some magic, but you know this is in no way an endorsement. If I can, that'd be freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they might be looking for a commitment. I think that's why Rice backed out. So that might be yeah. If you want to play, it might be like something. Like that. Well, that's all right. I mean, it, it's hedging my bets. Even even if I did top four, I mean, if I got a chance, it'd be, either way, I get to be there, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind. I, you know, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. But that's that's a you know you, you raise an interesting point. But, like, you know, we've got that. We're going to hang out with everybody. We're going to get to see everybody. This is going to be, like, the who's who. You know, and I'm, I'm ready for this LCQ. I've got my deck picked out. I've, I just need to do a little fine-tuning. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I already know what I'm playing for Nats also. See, there it is. Um, now, for me personally, like, time for testing has been a little kind of touch and go just because mm-hmm. still got still got the rest of my life to live, unfortunately. And it's just like, man, I can't do it this day. I can't do it this day. And, you know, well, I can do it this day, but then things happen. And because yeah, I'm also getting ready to move into a new apartment, so like I'm living, we're kind of living out of boxes right now because our lease is up. Like pretty much when we get back from LA, like the next week we're moving. Mm-hmm. So you know when I when I when I'm not here, like when I'm not doing stuff, I'm working or packing or getting all my ducks in a row for that. But no, I'm, I'm just excited to be going. You know, and uh, you know, thanks to old Adam Lane here, you know, helping me get my flight and everything taken care of. So you know. Which uh, I present to you this giant golf course check. <laughs> no, I definitely appreciate you taking care oh, of that dude. for me because I just, you know, I don't fly and I don't think about flights and, you know, they are starting to jump up now, so I appreciate that. But, you know, the, again, the journey's just beginning. I don't want to ramble anymore, but, like, you know, we're just getting started. I love this game. I love this community. We've really forged a lot of, you know, friendships that I that I hope last for a long time. Yep. You know, 
people are cool. This game's awesome. You know, and we've also d- created a you know a pretty devoted fan base, and the people listen to us, and we we have T-shirts that people have bought. Like it's it's so cool to see somebody wearing like our T-shirt. It's it's super humbling, you know. It's weird. And it was and it was really at Kansas City when we fr- at, at Kyle yeah that was the one that kind of punched me in the face too that woke yeah. me up but realized like people actually listened to us more well, than I thought we, they did. Well, and to, not to jump back around, but I, I went to a, a PPTQ down at Pocket, and that's when I had first like met Spencer and Trevor. Didn't know who they were at the time, but they were like, "Oh shit, you're Chris Adams. You do the RVA Returners podcast." And I was like, "Oh my god," because that was when like I think Spencer was like talking about, or it was either Spencer or Tanis, Spencer. one of the, I'm pretty sure it was Spencer. who was talking Monolith, about, like, right? yeah, yeah, talking about taking cockatrice out of their deck. I was like, "Don't you do it? Don't you?" And it ended up winning him like his top eight match. Yeah, he lost to me. Yeah. Yep. He was fatigued too. I could tell he was. Fatigued. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he just played that like monster set against Trevor like the ma- round yep. before. So like, and, and that, this is just what we're talking about, guys. Like, you know, every community you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna do stuff. You're gonna have these tournaments. You're gonna play the game. You're playing the game, but you're also creating these like memories and these these fun moments. Yeah, the best part for me is just hanging out with everyone. Yeah, and talking about the game. I like talking about the game. Dude, I, I I enjoy talking theory almost as much as I like putting cards on the table. Yeah, just same. talking about shit. Like it's fun. That's why I. All fifteen thousand group chats. I mean, it's always like something different, right? Yep. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to next season and yeah, see more what? opuses, I guess. Although I kind of wish they would slow down a little bit. Yeah, pump the brakes a bit because <laughs> uh, I feel like I feel like we're just now getting used to opus six, and now seven's right around the corner. And then I'm sure once I mean, I'm excited get, for the cards. I am too. Yeah, so I, I I can't get enough of this game. I can't get enough of this community. And uh, I mean, I, that's probably a good spot to close it up because we've been going on for a while. But just you know, just saying, be on the lookout for more, and you know, we're just we're glad you guys have been on this journey with us and having us chronicle it the whole time. Like it's just, it's been nice. Like I said, I've known Adam for a long time, and it, you know, there were times where like I was like away or we weren't hanging out. And, like it's good to kind of bring that that friendship and that camaraderie like back together. You know what I mean? Like it, it's really cool to to have this this activity yep. that makes us happy. And it turns out we're also pretty okay at. Yeah, we're okay. Which is icing on the cap. We're okay. We we we're fair to meddling as they See how say. See, we do in that. But I'm excited, no matter what. I'm sorry. You uh, you're gonna get that uh, that that uh, USA duster that you're gonna take. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna get the 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 mullet hair. The mullet Ooh, hair. Oh, nice. With the duster and the, and the hockey stick. Oh, you're gonna right? go, you're gonna do a Greco thing, right? Yeah. You're gonna do a <laughs> Greco thing. It's hella good. It's hella it's good. Hella good. <laughs> but now we'll probably end with that, man. Uh, so you know, like always, thanks for listening. See you later. It's a Greco thing. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening once again to the RVA Returners podcast. If you like this content and you want to hear more, check us out on YouTube at RVA Returners. And make sure you follow us on SoundCloud and check us out on Google Play and iTunes.